Today I'm going to be going over the Benelli M4 Gen 2 version that they call the T-Pro model. Uh, I'll put the model number in the description, but I'm just going to be doing an overview and some insights. Um, hopefully that can be useful to you guys. Uh, if you guys could give a like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Um, this is the box. It comes in just a cardboard box. Uh, I pulled everything out of it. It comes with your manual here, um, a little barrel, Benelli plastic little piece that goes on the barrel. Even comes with some Benelli oil that they give. And these are your Picatinny um, mounts that go on this handguard here. And by the way, I'll get into this later, but this is not an M-Lock handguard. Um, this is something that designed their own, so I'll get into that later. But um, this does come disassembled. Um, it'll come in, the handguard will be separate, the, um, the barrel will be taken off, the charging handle wasn't installed, and I believe the stock wasn't on there either. So it will have to be assembled. Um, when you slide the barrel through the handguard, this will have, it'll have to be put on first. Um, I did get this off Botac.com. Uh, they usually go for about uh, $2,400 after tax is what I was seeing most of them. But on Botac, I ended up getting it around two grand um, without the transfer fee. So it was about two grand on Botac. Came brand new in this box. Um, and before I get into the close up, I'm going to go over why I ended up going with this over uh, a newer, a newer competitor, the Beretta 1301. Um, these are pretty similar um, but I ended up going with this mainly because I wanted the collapsible stock and because I wanted to mount a Aimpoint, um, Aimpoint Micro T2 on uh, on this upper right here and uh, I couldn't find a co-witness option on the Beretta 1301 so um, that was pretty important to me so uh, I ended up going with this because Scalarworks makes a sync one mount that um, allows co-witness um, with your iron sights, but I'll go over some of the main pros and cons um, uh, for this and the Beretta. Uh, it does come stock with a collapsible stock. You can make it happen on the Beretta 1301, but it's more of a uh, an AR platform kind of stock. Um, a, a big one for most people is it's it's been battle tested and used by the Marines. It's it's extremely durable and reliable. Um, it's it's uh, it is heavier, but uh, the, the durability and reliability comes from the the more of metal parts rather than polymer and plastic. So for the Brenna 1301, like the rear iron sight is polymer and some of the other stuff is polymer on there. But uh, yeah, it is really durable and reliable. Um, uh, it does also have less recoil on it due to the weight. Um, this is a lot heavier. It's a few pounds heavier, uh, I believe this bottle is, um, than the Brenna 1301. Um, there, there are also a lot more aftermarket options for the Beretta um, than the, I'm sorry, for the Benelli rather than the um, Beretta. So the, the aftermarket options were, were a little bit more since it's been um, used longer and it's been out longer than the Beretta 1301. And uh, yeah, the red dot mounting was, was the big part on uh, why I wanted this. I, I couldn't find uh, an option for co-witness with the Aimpoint T2. Maybe I didn't look hard enough, but um, that, that was one thing that was important to me. And uh, this this newer handguard is, uh, is actually pretty nice. Um, instead of the old one on the old Benelli and the, the Beretta 1301 doesn't have any mounting options. But um, the two cool things about it, like I said, the mounting options, uh, which I'll show a little bit later, and um, it gives you a, a kind of hand rest to where you're not, you know, this barrel's going to be heating up. So it, it's kind of a good hand rest um, to where you can clamp hard down on it and, you know, you don't have to worry about burning your hand or whatever if you're not using gloves. But um, those are some of the main pros for the Beretta 1301. Obviously, um, people are kind of dead set on the faster cycling. So this does faster about um, one third slower than uh, the Beretta 1301. 1301 cycles about 33% faster. So um, that is important to some people. Um, and in my opinion, with the recoil and trying to get back on target and um, acquire your target, I don't think you'll be able to really utilize the, the quickness, the, 30, the extra 33% faster cycling rate. I don't think you'll really be able to utilize that when you're um, dealing with recoil and trying to get back on target. Um, they, it, it does have a little bit of a lighter trigger, the Beretta does, um, than this. Um, from what I found, I think it's about, I, I, I might be wrong, uh, maybe, maybe about a pound, a pound or so lighter than the Benelli. Um, but I'm, I don't know, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to, to tell the difference. Um, the, the stock, the stock bolt release and the stock charging handle is better um, on the Beretta than it is on here. 
um, on the older models. Now, I'll go into more detail later with this, but it does, on the T-Pro model, it does have an upgraded uh, bolt release and an upgraded charging handle, but the stock version um, is better on the Beretta rather than the old Benelli M4. Uh, it was pretty rough hitting that small charging or bolt release uh, on the old model. So that, that was a big plus. Price is a big, uh, is a big plus as well. Uh, it's depending on where you get it, it, it could be set four to $700 less than the Benelli. So, um, if you don't want to spend the money, the Beretta is a great option. It is, I, I almost went with it, but the Beretta is a, gr is a great option for the, for what you're getting for the cost. Um, uh, the Beretta comes with a stock barrel clamp that's QD and M lock, so you can mount a lighter sling up there, which is really nice. Um, the feed ramp is also a little bit more smooth than this. This one has like teeth on it almost. So the feed ramp is a little more, I'd say, smooth or just not much of a snag hazard. So that that's that's a plus. And uh, and also you can get, uh, I guess, depending on which version you get, there's a mess of stock that can come on the Beretta where it has an adjustable. Um, cheek riser to get you um where you want to be in your line of sight so that's really nice as well um but if you're thinking should i go pistol uh pistol grip or traditional just stock um i went with the pistol grip because i'll be mainly using this for tactical uh, purposes not competition um for tactical use um i'm not the ammo i'm going to be carrying on it and how i'm carrying it and shotgun cards or however you're carrying it you're not necessarily going to be able to get I, or me personally, I'm not going to be able to grab two rounds out of the shotgun car or four rounds out at once and then be able to quad load it pulling from a shotgun card. So that um, that being able to do quad loads or, or double loads wasn't important to me because of how I'm going to be able, be carrying the ammo. Now, if you're doing competition and you want it for that purpose, um, then I get why you would maybe go the other route. But for tactical purposes and, and being able to maneuver and... Um, manipulate the weapon i think the pistol grip was better for me over a traditional stock uh does the barrette for the beretta 1301 it does cycle um it does cycle uh less powerful loads like birdshot a little bit better um you can you can probably get a different spring or something to be able to cycle that a little uh, better on the benelli but um like i said for tactical purposes i'm not using this for hunting so i'm not i'm rarely ever going to use birdshot if i even try it on here but the beretta you can't go wrong with you they're both super solid um and for the cost point of the Beretta, it is, it's, it's almost a steal. So it's, it's really good if you decide to go that route, but I ended up going here for light mounting options. Um, I'll get into that now. Like I said, you can use the barrel clamp, um, that comes stock on the Beretta. Uh, if you can get a barrel clamp on here. If you want to mount your light out farther towards the end of the muzzle, um, or with this new mounting option, you can, uh, or the, the new mounting hand guard, you can just mount it right to here with your little pit rail pieces. So that's also cool as well. Um, so I guess it just depends where you want your light, how far you want it out. Um, I'm still looking into that. I'm either going to do, um, some type of tape switch or something because I want it out farther. So I'm, I'm, I'm considering the Briley three gun M lock handguard because it's, it is a 13 inch. So it'll get me out pretty far towards the end. Um, but this, this, um, handguard does not come with the springs and washers that are needed to use with that. So if you do go the bright, the Briley and like handguard route, you do have to purchase the springs and uh, Freedom Fighter Tactical has them for about $70, $80. So if you did go that route, you do need the washers to eliminate the, the rattle um, on the on the handguard. But yeah, you could do that if you wanted uh, if you wanted to use M-Lock, that, that's a great handguard. I'm, I'm looking into it, I'm not sure yet, but I'll be making more videos on this once I get it upgraded. I wanted to make this video before, while it's all stock because I'm gonna, I have a bunch of stuff waiting to put on, so I'll be making more videos on red dots and everything else I decided to throw on. The owner's manual for you. A little bit thick. I got the Benelli M4 oil. This little piece that just for aesthetics, pretty useless. And you have your three um, pick rail options for mounting on your handguard. Like I said, this is not M lock. It mounts with screws, and then there's a little Torx key um, tool to get that set up for you. So if you wanted a little mat a match shaver, put a weapon light on there, foregrip, whatever you might want to do. But I will start with the stock and move my way in. So uh, I like this stock a little better from the older one. Um, it seems a little bit more durable and I like the one piece rather than that gap that was in the other one. But this is a five position stock rather than it being um, the three position like the old one. So the button is right here. Just push that in and there's no twisting, which is also really nice. Um, you can just push that in and it'll stay it'll uh, stay so uh, it did come with a qd mount right here um, this is a quick detach qd um, 
So that is really nice uh, for a good sling option. I did see with another guy's, another guy's video that he didn't get this. So I'm not sure why he didn't, but um, it's a really nice stock. has a logo on the end of it. So it's, it's a great stock. Um, good for cushioning. Got that nice pistol grip there. Um, it's a, it's a great feel. Uh, I have about medium sized hands. I don't think it is too big or anything. The only thing I was didn't really like is how that is floppy. Why they didn't kind of trim that off or make that a little more slick. But other than that, it's fine. Got your safety here. It's a red for dead, a little flat on this side. On the other side, it's triangle. On the Beretta 1301, the safety is up here. But uh, this safety feels nice. No complaints with that. Um, I'll go ahead and give a little trigger pull. Here. That's it. It's so light. I, I mean, you can, you can barely even get to the wall. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a really nice trigger for the Beretta being lighter. Um, I can't, I can't even tell, but your backup iron sights and your pick rail, um, those are pretty standard, but it's the ghost ring iron sights and the kind of guard for that. So that's nice. There's windage option to move that. So that's good. Um, windage and elevation. Um, but they finally fixed the, the garbage bolt release that was on there. So that's, that's a bit bigger and it, it feels nice. Um, you don't need to go bigger. I'm going to throw a Terran Tactical one on there just because, but you don't need to go bigger. It hits really nice. And they also made that nice um, improvement to the charging handle as well. So that's oversized and this is over oversized and this is really smooth as well. So I, I did have a problem with it when I first got it. Um, it seemed to be coming loose. I'm not sure if I didn't slam it in there hard enough, but I kind of tapped it in a bit harder and I haven't had that problem since. So that might've been my user error, but um, these Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. These controls are a lot better. They feel plenty sufficient. Um, here's the feed ramp. I, I, I'm gonna swap this out too for Terran Tactical AccuGuide, but that's why I said the feed ramp isn't my favorite because it has that teeth on there. I'm not sure what the teeth are for, but um, I wasn't a fan of that, but it does have a nice little center slot there to guide your rounds in. Um, it's just, there. there's your follower, standard red. Um, also, this does have a bit of a hang-up when I was pushing in the shells. I'm going to try a Aridus Industries follower. Um, it's, it seemed to be getting caught a little, um, but it's not a huge problem if you just jam them in there. Um, but that, I, that was a little disappointing. So moving on to the handguard. Um, if you look closely, these, these circles are actually um, threaded, and that's where you mount your your pick rails to these little they're probably two two and a half inch pieces of pick rail that's where you mount those two so they'll mount on the side on the bottom all the way to there the side there and then the top so all these other spaces because of the um those rods in there those gas rods or the self-cleaning rods um because of those uh you can't use any of this stuff, but like I said, when you're when you have your hand on there or whatever, it makes it really nice to grab onto, and your hand's not getting um, <clears throat> your hand's not getting burnt. So that this this hand guard is actually a huge improvement. Um, M lock would have been better, but they did what they could, and this is plenty sufficient for trying to mount options. So that's nice. Now, since I already have it put together, there's two springs right in here um, that help it to not for this handguard not to wobble like i said on the on the old benelli they had those springs in the fore end or the handguard or whatever you want to call it um they had them in the the end here so that's their kind of new improvement to um i guess get that to not shake but when you're installing this um you really have to torque on this tight to get this seated um flush or with a very minimal gap but when you're which isn't a problem that's fine um and, and this is really nice and sturdy, but you want to make sure you get that really tight on there so there's no gap here. And also, uh, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, that little that little gray right in here, that's your barrel. You want to make sure that's also flush um, under this handguard, flush under here. Now, if you can see this handguard, it actually sticks past onto the upper rail, or right next to this pick rail. So if uh, I, uh, a guy said that if you're trying to use the Mesa Tactical um, side saddle it actually interferes with that as you can see if it wanted to go over it would be touching this but uh supposedly they're going to make a new one i'm, I'm not a, i wouldn't use the 
the fixed side saddles um, myself. I prefer a shotgun card, so you can take them off nice and easy. But yeah, these are some huge improvements, I think, to make it uh, be a lot better of a competitor to the Breda 1301. Um, that's pretty much all for there. Uh, like I said, that you got your pick rail, iron sights. Um, so yeah, just when you're putting that on, just make sure that you have this this uh, nut here really, really kind of torqued on there hard. Not with a wrench or anything, but yeah. So if I flip it over, again, they gave me another QD attachment point for a sling, which is awesome. Uh, you almost, I mean, you can run this out of the box without not changing anything because they give you everything to be able to run what you want on this gun, which is awesome. But another QD point for a sling, which is sweet. Um, this is the seven plus one, so that's nice. Um, and there is the other front iron sight, so that's good. Um, Besides that, like I said, if you wanted to mount your light here, that'd be plenty sufficient. If you wanted to add a barrel clamp and put it here to get it out farther, that'd be fine too. Um, but other than that, I will I will be making um, other videos on my upgrades. I'm going to put the, the sync mount, the Scalework sync mount on here with the T2. Um, I'll have to figure out if I'm going to swap this or if I'm just going to put a barrel clamp. Um, but these, these sling mounts are really nice. don't even have to do anything to them. Um, but if you have any questions or if I miss something, um, and sorry for the stutters and all the ums and shit, just trying to think as I go, these are some of my, my first videos and I'm still learning. So, uh, have patience with me, but if you have any questions or anything, feel free to comment down below. I'll make sure to reply to them. If you could give a like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. I will be posting a few more videos on this, on me changing the follower and there I'm going to put an Airtis Industries follower. Um, I'm changing out the. The safety here for a Terran Tactical and a Terran Tactical uh, bolt release and also a Terran Tactical AccuGlide. So I, I will be uh, making videos on all those and uh, whatever I decide to do with the weapon light here. So I just wanted to get this uh, up and going so you guys kind of give some insight on uh, on some questions you might not have seen answered. But can't go wrong with either. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. And thanks for giving this a watch. I hope all you guys are having a great day and uh, take care. Have fun. Be safe, guys.